Happy Friday, everyone. Welcome back to the YouTube channel. Today we are going to a, it's like a 3,200 square foot or 3,000 square foot fourplex 1920s property. So these are all fun. They're all, a lot of them in the downtown Houston area. And you always find some weird stuff like knob and tube wiring or I don't know, um, weird flipper repairs. And let's see what we're gonna go find. Let's go check it out. Okay, pulling up, the very first thing that I notice on this property, it has brand new fiber cement across the entire structure, which is fantastic. I mean, it's very rare that you see on a 1920s property and you show up and it has all new siding, new flashing, and I can't really see yet. We'll talk to Josh here in a little bit, but if there's a new roof. So uh, this is just literally first impression. This looks uh, pretty good. So let's go inside, let's find, we're here with Josh and John. John is on his final week of training, which is fantastic. You'll see him in the field uh, very shortly. So um, let's go see what we're gonna go find. So with the new fiber cement board, this is actually done really well. You can see here where they butted up the joints and uh, right above the windows, they have the overhead flashing. Uh, over over the windows which was look which looks really nice so uh, it's painted the bottoms of the fiber cement boards painted too as well uh, there's minor things that could be there always where the 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 two trim pieces but up together should technically be a little z flashing there but uh, no one ever really does that <laughs> but uh, it looks pretty good so far Okay, so looking at the roof just from the ground level on this side, you can tell that it is a little bit older and you can see some lifting shingles here in these areas. And then also you can see the flashing is lifting all in the, these areas. So whenever we're inside, it just tells us to really focus on these areas right against the wall where we'll probably have possible roof leaks. We just had a really heavy rain today. So this is a great day to use the infrared camera on the inside to see if we find any water leaks, which I mean, there's a good possibility we will. Coming around the west side of the structure over here, uh, same, same scenario, all new fiber cement siding, which, I mean, it really, this looks even better than some of the new builds that we run into these days. But uh, one of the first things that spot out, they still have some of the wood framed windows and you can see that there looks like there's a little bit of rot in place. And that's why you always want some sort of screwdriver or something to, to poke this stuff with, uh, just to see how bad the rot is. And you can actually see this is actually more of a paint defect. So it's always good to give it a, a good poke to realize how much repair you're gonna be, need to do. And this is probably just kind of like a sand and paint job, which is, which is nice and easy, easy fix. Another thing that sticks out to me that looks really good about these units here is that there is a really good clearance for the crawl space here. So that means that it can, can breathe, but also that we can possibly crawl underneath there. If you are going to purchase one of these, you gotta make sure that there is some sort of access or they'll allow us to remove the lathe to crawl underneath here because right now as home inspectors in the state of Texas, we are not allowed to damage the structure without the seller's permission to remove anything to crawl in there. So we'll do our best to try to find access, but if we can't find access, we'll always ask on site the listing agent or the buyer or the seller, sorry, to see if we can pull that back a little bit to, to crawl underneath there. But so far, uh, this is looking pretty good. Uh, you notice a lot of good things, you know, a uh, good, good ventilation, good clearance from the ground, and it looks like the, the drainage is good around the structure. You have new water lines, and then it also looks like they may have replaced the, uh, the drain lines for the, the plumbing too as well, so the sewer lines. So, uh, so far, this is actually looking really good. This is a good one. Okay, so another good sign about the property where they took care of this and they really brought this up to par to today's building standards is that I noticed that there is a French drain or a surface drain system for the crawl space. So they may have had a drainage issue underneath the structure and they added a drain in here to help mitigate the water around the structure, which is great. Uh, but the thing is, is right here, you can start to see there's starting to develop a negative slope to the strain and it's starting to become clogged. So this is gonna be a maintenance thing that we're gonna remind 
the uh, buyer or even the seller that they're going to need to take care of this to make sure that the water is clearing throughout the crawl space. A lot of water in these older structures can cause the foundation to move a lot. So this is an easy thing that you can keep maintenance to prevent foundation movement in the future. So walking around the structure, one of the very first things we do is we like to do a quick pass of the interior and we turn everything on and that includes the HVAC. So whenever we're outside, you can see the condenser running and you get to hear this. And you know enough to inform the buyer that there's an issue. I mean, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that this thing needs to be serviced and the fan probably needs to be replaced. So easy spot, good spot, and, and that's part of the routine. And if you need to know how our routine works, it's actually on our YouTube channel. And just type in home inspection routine, you'll find us there. So if you're purchasing one of these units and they're really, really old, if you ever see PVC caps on the exterior of the structure, uh, for the sewer drain system. That means that they probably replaced all the cast iron uh, sewer lines or um, you know there's clay if you're in a different part of the country but normally we only have cast iron here in Texas because Texas is not as that old compared to the rest of America but the thing is is if you see this it means they have taken action and uh, replacing it and you might want to ask whenever you put in offers uh, whenever you're purchasing the property if they have any paperwork or any warranty from the plumbing company that installed the new sewer line. So good, it's good that it's there and it just alerts you to ask more questions. 1920s unit and we have actually five newer panel boxes. They're not brand new. I'm not, myself, we're not going to open this, but John and Josh will open up every single one of them and look in to make sure all the wiring looks good. But if you're looking to purchase one of these units, these older units, and you see newer panel boxes, this is a good sign that you're not going to have to spend a lot of money on the electrical. I'm not saying it's done 100% correctly right now, but it is a good sign that they did install it correctly. So really nice uh, panel boxes. They all have ground rods. Also, the service mass for the electrical has been replaced as well, and it's been upgraded. So overall, I say this work looks pretty good without opening it, and we'll let Josh and John figure that out further on in the inspection. Okay, so uh, one of the final things is, is I talked about access to the crawl space. I don't have my crawl suit today, uh, but Josh does, so hopefully we can give him the camera to get into the property. But right here, we notice one of the panels is a little popped off, and uh, they are actually screwed in, so we'll use our screwdriver and we'll be able to unscrew these without damaging the property at all, property at all, and we'll crawl underneath the structure. So uh, th this is a great spot to get in there and we can better inform our clients by getting in the crawl space. So one of the first things we notice walking it up, you know, we notice the headroom for the staircase is not the proper height and neither the handrails. Yes, this would be a nuisance call out for home inspectors. And, you know, I guess like a real estate agent or the client would be like, well, why is he focusing on the stairs? Well, actually in the state of Texas, they require us to report these small items, but it, it comes down to the inspector letting the, the buyer know that, you know, code changes all the time. And in the 1920s, it wasn't a big issue. And it really still is not a big issue today. We just have to inform you that it's not done correctly. And I wouldn't do anything to fix it. I'd focus on the major problems. So whenever you're going to purchase one of these older 1920s crawl space properties, one of the things that you're going to notice walking through them is a lot of the times the floors are really wonky or out of level. And whenever it is like that, don't stress too much until you come up to a final opinion after you crawled underneath the crawl space. And Josh is about to crawl underneath there right now. So he's going to bring the camera down there and talk about some of the things that he sees. Uh, one of the other things that we notice is there's a water stain on the wall right over here. And we're going to take a look at that first before we get into the crawl space. So one of the quick finds that we noticed when we first walked into this unit, when as soon as we opened up the door, we noticed some waviness across the baseboards. And that was brought up in one of our previous YouTube videos in the past. And that's one of the stuff that you want to start to focus on is like, well, why is that like that? And when I got down here, I could, uh, I, you always want to poke it, you know, the poke test. And you can hear that cracking noise. And that signifies uh, two things. You either have some water damage over here or we know when we're in the crawl space that we want to focus in this area to see if there's any termites uh, because you have a water source on the other side of this wall where there's a bathroom and then uh, uh, so the termites love water and wood and this could be a perfect uh, scenario for them. Yeah, it looks 
good. So we got the fan, we got the fancy FLIR uh, working right there. And uh, what Josh is pointing out right here is you can see these little circle marks. And these little circle marks normally signifies water. And what we'll have to do is get the ladder to double check that that's the water, not just a cool spot or something cold sitting in the attic because this only reads temperature difference. It does not read water, but circular patterns in an infrared camera normally indicates water. Okay, yeah, so the test that we're gonna, do, that, we, that I was talking about whenever we're trying to determine if there's, this water is active or not, we run water in the bathroom and we try to see if there's any temperature difference across the infrared camera, and then we'll run the moisture meter across the wall here too as well. So whenever we run the moisture meter across the wall, you know, we didn't get any significant changes. So that leads us to the next option. Of it could be termites or it's just old water damage from an old water leak in this bathroom. So you always want to further evaluate. You just don't want to call out wood rot. You want to try to better inform the client of why this is here and what it might be. So uh, good find and good test. And the last step is uh, we're going to send Josh into the crawl space. Okay, we're down here in the crawl space, and one thing we really want to be sure that we do in our crawl space is formulate a path to view as much of the crawl space as possible while also being safe. So you can see right here, there's a lot of electrical lines uh, right in front of me, so I'm not going to crawl over those, uh, but I'm going to go this way where there's no electrical lines. And under here, um, walking through the first floor, there's a big dip about halfway through the building towards the back. So I'm going to try and get as far back as I can to see uh, what's going on with the piers back there. There's probably some out of level, maybe some even falling down. And as I turn around, immediately right here, we see some termite damage, some old rot, and uh, some more termite damage right here. We also notice that there's no subfloor insulation, which is pretty common on a 1949 house. Uh, all right, so we got uh, cinder block piers. We got some uh, some brick piers. Uh, these brick piers are probably the original ones. Uh, you can see that one right there is already is out of level, so it probably needs to be uh, replaced with the cinder block reshimmed. You can see we got a little bit of uh, wood damage over there. Keep in mind that we're not crossing over um, wiring. We're going to crawl as far as we can. Um, we also look to make sure that there are no snakes, because I hate snakes. And then also, um, uh, no standing water, especially with electrical lines on the ground, standing water would be bad. We had a lot of rain today, but I don't see any standing water, so it looks like the drainage is pretty good. Over there, let me zoom in, we have a cast iron drain line going into the ground right in front of me right there that's cast iron so it looks like they've replaced some of the plumbing but it looks like we still have some that is connected over there under one of the units all right it looks like there's a fair amount of debris so again we're gonna be careful looking out for sharp objects we swim don't want to impale ourselves okay let's see if I can get over here All right, so you can see right there, you see the blue uh, PEX line. So they have replaced some of the PEX, or uh, some of the old galvanized plumbing with PEX. I can see all the way back there, it's hard to zoom in that far, but there's some PVC, but also some cast iron. So they have replaced some of the cast iron, but not all of it. All right, here's a closer view of this, this pier. Uh, you can see it's cracked, damaged, it's leaning. Uh, there's another brick, it looks like. All the brick piers are leaning. Uh, they have done some previous repairs. I see some new wood shims under here. All right, so there's a good look at the crawl space. You only need a little bit. 
Okay, you're good. Okay, closing that video up, 1920s flip. It's pretty good, you know, I don't know what Josh found. Isis is gonna edit that video up, but you can see this home's definitely gonna have problems. All homes have problems, and especially 1920s homes have problems. So you have to go in that with that expectation. It's not gonna be perfect. But I'd say overall, this one is actually probably one of the better shaped ones that you see in uh, uh, downtown Houston if you're looking at investing in these type of structures. Uh, so uh, really good information in this one. If you learned something, please leave a comment below. That's how we know that we're making good content. And please hit that like and subscribe button and catch us on the next one. See you next Friday. Check it out. Bye, guys. <laughs>